Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Megan. I am the manager at the Wellness Center at St. Jude Wellness Center. I'm also a registered dietitian, so you often see Taylor, but once in a while you'll see me pop in here because I love to teach also. So sometimes I steal the reins back from her. Um, just some housekeeping stuff before we dive into tonight's topic is that we are recording this presentation and um, we put all recordings of all of our free webinars and free content on our Vimeo page. And I'll remind you of that at the end as well. But if you go to Vimeo.com, V-I-M-E-O backslash St. Jude Wellness, you'll see all of our free content, whether it's fitness, cooking classes, nutrition videos, what have you. So if you miss part of tonight or you have to, you had to miss last month, they should be up there. I usually try and get them up within a week or so. Um, so all of that, please try and keep yourself muted just for the sake of everybody else so that they can hear me. Um, and if you have a question, put it in the chat. I can't see the chat when I'm in presentation mode. So put it in there and I will circle back at the end to make sure that I see everyone's questions, okay? All right, so we're talking about lunches. School year started, whether you are in school or you have a little one in school or you have a grandkid in school or not, maybe you're just <laughs> packing lunch for yourself. It just feels like the September transition is a really good time to relook at goals for a lot of people. Um, again, independent of whether you're actually physically packing your lunch to go to school or go to work. I just find that so many people with each seasonal change are looking for something positive to do for themselves. Yes. So it just feels right that for the school year starting, we would be looking at lunches. All right. So let's go into that. And I, I hear someone. So if we could please mute yourselves. Okay, so today's agenda is we're gonna look at a lot of funny food pictures. No, I'm just kidding. It does make you laugh though, right? If you just Google funny food pictures, there's a lot out there. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of background. So on my, what I call my nourishing lunch formula, we're going to look at lunch prep methods and all the ideas, which is why most of you are here just to get more ideas. And then some of my favorite resources. So just that background of why should we care about lunches? Why does it matter? Most people are looking at breakfast and dinner. I find that a lot of times when we talk about healthy eating, we're not talking about lunches. It's just not quite as fun and exciting as talking about chia pudding bowls and things like that. But um, it is a struggle. Over 50% of Americans struggle to eat a healthy lunch. 77% um, report being more likely to eat healthy meals at other times of the day if they have prepared their lunches. So I think that's really interesting. If you know you have already packed yourself a healthy lunch, you're more likely to eat a healthy breakfast because you know you've already put the effort into doing that. Um, and this was all from a survey done three years ago. Um, so you know, slightly outdated, but they haven't redone the survey. But nine out of 10 people would like to eat lunch, a healthy lunch and or have healthy food provided in the workplace. More than half of those surveyed said that they were more likely to eat unhealthy foods when stressed and making a decision on what to order. So hello, drive throughs And there's tons of research on taking an actual lunch break of at least 20 minutes boosts energy, creativity, productivity, and workplace morale. So all good reasons to be looking at what we're eating at that midday hump. And I just think this is fascinating. Part of this is my own phase of life right now is I have little kids um, who are getting into the school system, but this company did a lot of research on what schools give as their school lunch. So the free school lunch to their students. And obviously this is the company, they, they took their own pictures on the same train. Not every country is giving their school lunches on the same train. So this is the same company taking the pictures, but based on their research, they put together what lunches more or less look like in our country versus in other countries. So this is what we're feeding our children at the U in the US. We have chicken nuggets, which is our fried protein. Our vegetable is peas and potatoes, so very starchy. Our fruit is um, a fruit cup, not actual fruit, and a cookie. Um, France, you can see very different. You know, they have a slice of brie cheese. They have a lot of uh, cheese and meat in their diet, but lots of fresh fruits and vegetables as well. Down in Brazil, Wow, the color. Can you imagine serving that to a USA child? <laughs> a salad, um, beans and rice mixed together, a little bit of meat with some vegetables, a piece of bread. No problem with that, but it does look a lot more whole grain than our grains up at the top. Um, and then their dessert is some fried plantains. 
So still fruit. And then in Greece, some orzo with chicken, again, fresh fruit and vegetables, some little dolmads, and they have um, a little whip type of meringue with pomegranate seeds. So it's just interesting to me the difference between our country and others. And if you look at adult typical lunches, they compare pretty similarly. So how should our plate or our lunchbox look? You've heard about the healthy plate method, the balanced plate method. It looks a little different depending on what website you're on. I like this one as opposed to the ones that are divided into fours because I don't feel like that's really realistic eating. This one shows half of your meal should be colorful fruits and vegetables, whether that's all vegetable, whether it's all fruit, there will be some meals where your produce is all fruit and that's okay. Whether it's a mix of different types of vegetables, raw and cooked, but half of that plate should be produce. And then the other half is divided up between your starch and it depends on what your diet is. And maybe your starch is a grain, maybe it's a whole grain bread, Maybe it's a potato or a sweet potato because maybe you're not going into grains. Maybe you're someone who's following a really low carb diet, in which case your carb is a low starch fruit. So there's, there's different ways to modify this plate. And I think that's something to, to keep in mind that a lot of times people think, oh, the carb has to be a grain. That's not true. It had just, you need some starch in your life. Um, and then a quarter of the plate being protein. And then there must be some fat in there. And the fat doesn't have to be a whole half of an avocado. It can just be maybe the olive oil that was put on those roasted broccoli. Or maybe you have a heavier fat meat for your lunch and therefore you don't have a lot of added fat in your lunch. So let's look at kind of how to break down those recommendations into the lunchbox formula. So sometimes this helps people to categorize that a little bit more. And obviously this is not an all encompassing list of food, um, but this is just sort of some, some very common lunch foods in their categories. So first you choose your base, AKA your fibrous starch. So maybe that's bread. For some people, a sandwich is just the easiest way to think about lunch. Okay, so let's find a really high fiber, low sugar bread for you. Um, maybe it's a wrap or tortilla or a pita. Maybe it's a bagel. Maybe we're not a bread person or we're moving away from bread and you're trying to do other things. Um, maybe it's rice or other types of grains like a grain bowl or what people call a Buddha bowl. Uh, maybe it's some noodles, crackers. Maybe it's not a grain at all. And like I said, it's potatoes, it's squash. Any of those can be your fibrous starch, but choose one. Okay, so we're not having this gigantic bowl of rice or noodles. We're not having huge pieces of bread. We're not having bread and crackers and chips. And you know, you're, you're choosing your one starch. Choose one to three proteins. And I say one to three because this is where we get full. We want more protein than we do the starch because that's actually gonna keep us fuller longer, get us through a longer period of the afternoon. So it could be sliced chicken or turkey or ham. Maybe it's a chicken salad, hard boiled egg or egg salad, canned salmon, canned tuna, hummus. It can be falafel and bean. It can be a vegetarian option, cottage cheese, yogurt. It doesn't have to be a meat and a sandwich. Choose one to three vegetables. And this is probably if I were to say, raise your hand, if you can find one of these five categories where you probably aren't doing as well as you could be, this is probably it. I see a lot of people have a little bit of baby carrots or some celery, and maybe that's it. So greens, shredded cabbage, sliced radishes, um, baby tomatoes, bell peppers, carrots, sprouts, cucumber slices, artichoke hearts. These are very, very common, but we'll get into some ideas of how to bring in more types of vegetable. The fiber is so key for keeping you full, because if you just have a piece of bread and a piece of turkey, you're going to feel full for 30 minutes. If you have more fiber to go along with that, you are going to feel fuller longer. You're also just going to feel in general, more satisfied at the end of that meal, because that's another common thing and why people reach for the goodies after having that just plain turkey sandwich, the, because they're not actually feeling like they had enough because they didn't have enough fiber. Choose a fruit and then choose a fat. Again, the fat is what helps us feel satiated and nourished. It doesn't mean drizzle on the butter. It means add some fat to whatever you're eating. Maybe that's a sauce, like a pesto. Yes, you can eat mayonnaise, but maybe we choose a better mayonnaise and we don't go crazy with the portion sizes. Um, so I find a lot of people are an all or nothing when it comes to fats. And it's more about choose a little bit of a good quality so that you feel really good and nourished. So let's apply this to actual food, the real helpful part. 
So these are four different examples of a balanced plate that may surprise you. And I'm, I try to really show examples of different types of eating, different dietary mechanisms. So if someone's following more of a pescatarian diet, that doesn't mean they always have to have salmon and broccoli and rice. It doesn't have to have a rice bowl. You can have a sandwich on a pescatarian diet and it can still follow those guidelines. So we have a starch, we have bread, and there is there are two servings here, which mean I didn't choose a fruit. Okay, so this is a way maybe I'm just in a hurry. I've got a crazy day. I don't have enough time to pack lots of things and I can't have anything messy. I'm just going to have two big servings of bread. So I have two starches and I'm not going to have a fruit with it because those would be extra starch. Not my ideal. I'd rather you have a half a sandwich with some fruit and with some vegetables, but there are days where we're going to have to kind of make trade offs. So your starch is your bread. Your protein is that's a tuna melt. So there's tuna and cheese on there. Your vegetables, you have spinach inside of that panini and you have tomatoes on the side. And your fat is there's a pesto spread inside of that. Or maybe you have an aioli that you've mixed in with your tuna. So you have all those components is just in sandwich form and you're still following along with those dietary protocols of being pescatarian. Down below that, super, super easy. Do not discount the idea of breakfast for lunch. Hard boiled egg, fruit, and avocado. You've checked off all of your boxes. You have starch because you have a double serving of fruit. You have eggs, so you have covered your one serving of protein. You have both vegetable and fruit in having your avocado. Yes, avocado hits both categories. So, oh, I'm sorry, vegetable and fat, not vegetable and fruit. That's what the, the F stands for. Um, so you're getting both there. So this is actually going to be a really filling meal because you have so much fat and fiber in that avocado. Now, could you make it even more filling? Maybe by adding actual raw vegetables. Maybe you have a second egg. If you're someone, if you had a big workout that day or you're feeling extra, you know, noshy or feeling like you're going to need some snacks, you can always add to this, but this is a pretty balanced meal. Up in the right corner, someone who's following a low carb diet could have this. Yes, just two main ingredients and you're still following the balanced meal idea. So you have your starch because there was a side of fruit not pictured. You have grilled chicken and your protein. You also cooked that grilled chicken and the broccoli in olive oil. So there's your fat and you have some roasted broccoli. And then right below that is someone who's maybe following more of a keto style. They really aren't going to have any starch. And so therefore they can, they can um, allow their, their their diet to have extra fat. So no starch, their protein is some farmer's cheese. They have tomatoes and cucumber and onion as their vegetable, and they have fat as their olives and the cheese as well. Okay. So these are just different ways of going about that. So how can we apply all of these guidelines to actual real life lunchbox ideas? That's why you're all here. So let's get into that. How do we prep a healthy lunch for ourselves and continue to do this on a regular basis? First, you're gonna to have to ask yourself some questions. One, do you prefer hot or cold lunches? If you prefer hot lunches, do you have somewhere where you can heat up your lunch in your office or your school place or wherever you're going for lunch? If not, you need to invest in some sort of awesome thermos container so that you can put hot food into the container and take that hot food with you and it'll stay hot until lunchtime. Great for kids. Um, if you're going to put soup or like a casserole, send it off to school. They don't have a microwave there. So you might want to get some sort of thermos. Or are you someone who really does prefer more of a salad type of thing? So get to know what you like and what feels satisfying at lunch so that you can buy the appropriate tools for that. Are you someone who can eat the same thing every single day or can you change it up? There are two very different methods of meal prepping. And I think a lot of people think, oh, if you're meal prepping for the week, it means you have to make all five lunches all at once. Well, that is one method and that works for a lot of people, but that might not be what works for you. And that doesn't mean you can't meal prep. And we're going to talk about prepping ahead of time. Um, if you are someone who needs to change it up, could it maybe be every other day? Maybe you're just thinking about two different lunches, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I have one thing, Tuesday, Thursday, I have another, or are you someone who literally needs a different lunch every single day? You're going to have to plan accordingly based on what's going to work for you long-term because it might be a little bit more work to plan five different meals for the week. But if that's the only thing that really keeps you satisfied, you're, you're going to have to plan for that. Otherwise you're going to find yourself at the fast food really quickly. How do you feel about leftovers? For me, this is my savior. I plan for 
big old bags of mixed greens. And then I put whatever is left over from dinner on top of that. And that is my lunch the next day because I don't really care about leftovers at all. I think they're great. It doesn't bother me that we ate it the night before. And I always know that I just kind of prep an additional amount of dinner, hoping for leftovers the next day. But for some people that does not work. I have clients who are like, nope, I will never, ever, ever eat something reheated. I will not eat it the next day. So you have to know that and plan for that. Um, Leftovers can be great, but if you're not going to eat it, why bother? Uh, How much prep time do you have? Schedule in your prep time like it is a doctor's appointment. Okay. And it's going to shift your, no one's weekends or weekdays, whenever your, your prep day is, is going to be the same every single week. So look ahead. Are you going out of town next weekend? How can you prep for that? Knowing you have very little prep time. Are you home all weekend long? How, where are you going to prep so that you don't just forget about it until the next night, until Sunday night comes around because you had nothing going on all weekend long, plan it in, know when your prep time is. And do your cravings change with the season? I'm going to show you at the very end, kind of a general lunch meal plan template. Um, My recommendations are always to have four weeks worth of ideas. That way you can just keep rotating every month through things. But that might not work for you if you're someone who's like, right now I'm craving pumpkin and squashes, but I don't really want that in the summer. So kind of know if how many recipe and and lunch ideas you're going to need to have based on your cravings and based on how you like to eat. So this is what I consider to be the two main batch prepping methods for your lunchbox. Option one is to prep all your meals at once. And I'm talking about Monday through Friday because that's general, but obviously your all of your lunches are gonna change a little bit. You might be working part-time, you might not be working at all, you work from home, but you're still kind of prepping something. Maybe you're not packing it to go somewhere. Um, so when I say make all five at once, I'm talking Monday through Friday, but know that you can adjust this to your schedule, right? So option one is to prepare all your meals at once. Monday through Friday, my lunch is ready to go. All I do when I head out the door those mornings is grab my lunch and go. It makes your mornings so fast and easy, but this method does take the most time ahead of time. It takes a lot more prep ahead of time to prepare five different meals. Now, if you're someone who is okay with eating the same thing every day because you answered the questions from the previous slide, that might not be so bad. You make one big batch of soup or casserole and you just divvy it up into five different containers, put it in the fridge and you're done. But if you don't like to eat the same thing every day, making five different meals, could, it could take some time. But again, your mornings, your day, it's gonna be so efficient and fluid when it comes there, you'll thank yourself. So it, there's pros and cons. So things that work really well for preparing all, all your meals at once is a deconstructed salad. And I'm going to show you that what I mean by that, like those mason jar salads, things basically without the dressing. Think of that. Um, bowls, so like a rice bowl, a grain bowl, cauliflower rice. Casseroles work really well because you can just make a big dish and put that in the oven and divvy it out. Sheet pan meals is the same idea where you maybe are cooking some chicken breasts and some vegetables all around it in one big sheet pan. Soups and stews work great. And we're finally starting to get into soup and soup season, soup and stew season. And then I'm going to show you what I mean by charcuterie boxes in a minute. Option two is preparing one main ingredient and divvying it up in different ways as the days come. This method works great for me. Um, I find I don't want to eat the same thing every single day. So like I said, the leftovers work really well, or you just prepare what works for a lot of people is your main protein. So an instant pot shredded beef, you have just a ton of shredded beef, kind of a plainer flavor, and you can put that into a wrap, into a bowl, put bring some crackers or some tortillas with you and make some little tacos or open face sandwiches. You can put it over a salad. You can do a lot of different things with whatever you have left over and that main protein. Um, So what works really well in our house is I'll buy a whole chicken and I'll throw it in the instant pot and cook it. And we just have a big container of chicken in the fridge. And that is for lunches. I don't really use it for dinners. I just throw it into whatever works for my toddler at preschool. It works really well to wrap it up in a tortilla. For my husband, it usually works best to have it in an actual sandwich or in a bowl type of situation. And like I said, I use it with whatever leftover vegetables we have over a bed of greens. So you can do a lot of different things with that. Um, bean burgers do really well. If you're going down the vegetarian route, you can make a big batch of bean burgers and throw that in a wrap in a bowl and a sandwich and a soup. 
grilled tofu works really well and we're last all week long. So all these things last a while and it's easy just to throw that into whatever the, the dish is that you're making. So we'll go through option one first, just some ideas to wrap your head around this. These are all different types of deconstructed salads. Again, that just means the salad ingredients without the dressing tossed so that it doesn't get soggy, right? So three different types of them, mason jar salads, they're just so cute and trendy, but they don't have to be in a mason jar. You can very easily put any of these salads into a Tupperware with a little container with your dressing. It doesn't have to be all perfectly layered like this, but should you like to do mason jar salads, if that appearance also kind of just appeals to you, this is how you would do it, where you have the dressing on the bottom and then you layer up with your more um, crunchy vegetables than your protein, than your greens on the top so that nothing gets mushy or soggy. Um, and that appearance is a big piece of eating too. If you are actually likely to grab this mason jar, get excited about eating it because it's cute, versus if you just throw everything in kind of a baggie and have to put it on a plate at work, it, maybe there's a difference there too, if you're more willing to actually eat it and be excited about eating it. So these are three of my favorites. One is the Asian chicken salad. And I'm gonna throw in brand names here too, just because people always ask me about dressings and sauces and things like that. So it's not that this is the only way to go, but these are some of my favorites that I can also vouch for the ingredients and the nutrition. So Primal Kitchen is a great brand. They have a ton of different flavors of dressings and sauces, really great ingredients, Whole30 and um, paleo friendly if you follow any of those diets. They have a sesame ginger dressing that is killer. So I'll put that on the bottom, slivered almonds and roasted red bell pepper right over, the, over that, some shredded chicken from the Instant Pot over that, and then a mix of cucumber and a slaw over that. So this can be as easy or not as you want it to be. So I showed some modifications. Let's say you're vegetarian, get rid of the chicken, bring in some chopped up tofu, some diced choked tofu, or tempeh would actually be really good with that too. Um, don't feel like chopping up a bell pepper, buy jarred roasted bell pepper and just take it out of the jar and throw it in. Um, if you feel like you need a little bit of extra starch in this, it's not quite filling you up enough. Maybe you add some soba noodles, cook soba noodles to it. So you'd have to prep a batch of soba noodles, or maybe you want that fillingness of a noodle, but you're also trying to follow low carb. You can use shirataki, which is the glass noodles, um, which are really low carbohydrate. So lots of ways to modify this, use a pre-made chopped, um, slaw. So you, it really wouldn't have to take a whole lot of time to put this together. Um, below that vegetarian Greek salad. So on the bottom, you're going to have a Greek vinaigrette followed by chickpeas. They can just be canned chickpeas, uh, falafel after that red onion, tomatoes, avocado, all raw. So easy to just chop and go feta and arugula. And then when you're going to eat this, you just dump it into a bowl or you just shake it and then eat it out of a bowl. So a lot of times I'll bring a bowl with me when I make mason jars, but you could also eat it out of the jar modifications. Maybe you add chicken. Maybe it's not quite high protein enough for you. Um, use canned beans instead of whole cooked beans because it's going to be so much cheaper that way. Use Trader Joe's has a chopped veggie mix. Literally it's onion and pieces of broccoli and carrot and bell pepper, um, all just chopped up and ready. So just throw that in there. You don't do any chopping at all. Um, maybe you need a little bit something extra for starch. Bring some dull mods on the side. I'm going to show you in a few slides. Trader Joe's has a can of ready to go dull mods, which if you haven't had it, it's rice stuffed grape leaves and they're super yummy. Um, so those are all things you can modify here. Pre-made falafels you can find now too. Taco salad over on the right. So the bottom is going to be a ranch. I really like the Whole30 brand of ranch dressing. It's good quality ingredients. And I mix that with salsa or mashed avocado or guacamole mixed with salsa. Either one on the bottom. Know that if you use avocado or guacamole, it's going to turn a little brown. So if that's a turnoff for you, go the ranch route. Um, tomatoes, bell pepper, radish, ground beef, and black beans that have been cooked in a taco seasoning. So there's your prep, right? You prepped a bunch of ground beef and black beans in a taco seasoning. Everything else is canned or ready to go. Um, olives, peppers, and maybe even corn, like canned corn with your mixed greens on top. Okay, modify. Ditch the beef for just beans. Or maybe you like the idea of kind of the beefy texture, but you don't want beef. You could use um, a beef alternative, but be careful with those. You want to read ingredients. I really like Abbott's Butcher brand of chorizo. So it's chorizo, meaning it's plant-based. It's made from peas. 
Um, maybe use Trader Joe's fire roasted peppers and onions in the freezer section. So they're already roasted. You don't have to worry about that. Maybe you bring a tortilla on the side because it's not quite filling enough. You want it to feel more like a burrito. So lots of things you can do with that one idea of a flavor. Okay, so now the idea of batch prepping soups and stews and casseroles. Again, just here are some of my favorites. And instead of showing you the breakdown because they're, these are made from actual recipes, I showed you where the recipes came from um, and again, how to modify it. So we have a curry stew up top by the Real Food Dietitians delicious, makes a huge amount. I use this one a lot, especially as the weather starts to cool. Um, and usually I'll serve it with some rice. So I just put it all in a thermos, but you could do cauliflower rice if you're trying to go low carb or maybe quinoa to get a little bit more fiber and protein in there. Maybe you don't like that texture of a rice being soaked in the um, stew and for half your day. So maybe you bring a little container of rice on the side and dump it in right before you eat it. You could use frozen vegetables here. You could swap in light coconut milk instead of full fat or just use bone broth if you don't want it as creamy. Healthy hamburger soup. This is from the whole cook and you could swap in extra vegetables instead of potato, again, for the carb needs. Um, maybe you swap in your favorite alternative ground beef like by the Abbott's Butcher instead of a regular ground beef if you're wanting it to be a vegetarian version. Um, this is a really yummy chicken soup with rice because it uses cauliflower rice by Paleo Running Mama, but you could just use regular rice. I've, I've made this exact same soup with wild rice and it's really good. Um, you could put whatever vegetables you want in here. This, this recipe modifies really well, or maybe you put noodles in there, like a soba noodle to make it like a chicken noodle soup. Um, and, or you could also just put chickpeas instead of the chicken. And then here's a vegetarian soup. The vegetable lentil soup by Abra's Kitchen is so good. But again, use any vegetables you want. Maybe if you don't care about having some sort of animal product in there, you could do bone broth to make it a little bit more fatty and, and filling. Maybe you bring a piece of crusty bread with you. And then I put that link down there and I will share this PowerPoint with um, whoever is attending tonight so you can have some of these links. Um, but this seriouseats.com link is actually the 2022 best thermoses link. And so there's actually some really cool different types of thermoses that you can buy for if you're wanting to go down the soup path. Okay, so that was option one, preparing one big amount of some sort of dish, divvying it up into five different lunches. Option two, if you recall, was to batch prep just an ingredient and sort of put that in different methods throughout the week. So here's an example. Let's batch prep a bunch of meatballs. Use any ground meat, bake it. Maybe you buy ready-made meatballs. So all you have to do is heat them up like from Trader Joe's, they have a great one. And then throughout the week, you can put it over some pasta with roasted vegetables and tomato sauce. Maybe you put it over zoodles with some pesto. Maybe you put it in a pita with a bit of slaw and tzatziki. Maybe it's on some sort of Italian salad. So obviously you have to prep a little bit in your head of what other ingredients you need in your house, but you can see how easily it is to modify this type of thing. And you don't need to have huge batches already prepared. So different ideas for batch prepping protein, baked tofu or tempeh goes with anything. Roast whole chicken, shred it up, slice it up, whatever. Um, shredded pork or, pork or beef shoulder. So um, I use the instant pot a lot. It's just really easy to set it and forget it, but you could do crock pot for these or even in the oven. Um, bean burgers, really easy. It takes a little time to make the patties, but then you pop them in the oven and you have burger patties ready for the week. Same thing with salmon burgers. If you have a canned salmon and they, they aren't like as fishy smelling when you cook them. So if you bring it to work, you won't be the person who smells like tuna in the, in the lounge. Um, falafels do really well at lasting all week long once you've cooked them. Um, oh, I put roast whole chicken on here twice. Hard boiled eggs are great. And again, you can batch prep those and you can mash it into an egg salad. Maybe one day you have it whole on a salad and the next day you mash it with some hummus and put it in a sandwich. Um, egg, chicken, or chickpea salad instead of egg salad, and then homemade lentils, all ideas for your protein. So this is how an idea of some things you could have at home and batch prep and put it into some different lunches. You'll notice just by looking at the picture before you even look at the words over here that it's very similar ingredients across the board. You're looking at pretty much the same foods, but we're changing it up just a little bit based on what we have. And we're changing up the sauce. 
that is key. If you are someone who needs a different food every day, think about possibly just changing your sauce or your dressing because suddenly that same mix of chicken and broccoli and sweet potato and rice goes from a Greek bowl to a taco bowl, just from using tzatziki sauce versus salsa. So that's one of the things that helps me the most. So um, example, batch prep, you're going to saute broccoli, bell pepper, and squash all together, or put it in a big sheet pan, roast a whole chicken in the instant pot or your crock pot, buy a big old bag of spinach, and have some easy starches. Maybe you have some tortillas in the fridge. Maybe you have some of that microwave wild rice that you can get. Have those things at the ready that maybe if you don't eat them this week, it's not that big of a deal. You can eat them next week. Have condiments to change it up. Have a Greek vinaigrette, have some hummus, have some salsa, have some taco seasoning. And then just throw in the random stuff. So in the salad up top, there's sunflower seeds and, and there's avocado in that middle one down at the bottom to kind of change it up with the tortilla. One of them has canned corn, one of them has canned beans. So using some pantry and freezer staples to mix things up just a little bit, but you didn't actually have to do all that much prep. And then this is something that's really fun. Think of charcuterie as a lunchbox because charcuterie boards are all the rage. They're so cool right now. Um, breakfast boards and waffle boards and snack boards. I mean, I've seen them all. So think of that in lunchbox form. Okay, so what do I mean by that is think of something in each of those food categories. Think of a protein, think of a fat, think of some vegetables that you would not mind just sort of noshing on at a party if they were sitting out and then put them into a lunchbox and you have this fun little thing to eat and it looks cute and it's really not a whole lot of prep. So these are just all these different ideas. You have a meat and cheese board that has some berries in it. You have a chickpea salad. So you prepped ahead some chickpea salad and you just threw in some raw celery, raw carrots and some crackers. Pepperoni pizza charcuterie board. You have some tiny little pita rounds. You put in a dish of pizza sauce with some cheese, some little pepperonis, some grapes. Okay, now this is this one could use some vegetable in my opinion, but it's a good it's a good idea. Maybe you have some roasted red bell pepper to put on there, or you have a salad on the side. Um, the egg and cheese boards. So you have hard boiled egg with some cheese and some nuts and some apples and grapes, or maybe it's just turkey and hummus, which is basically that one at the bottom is a turkey sandwich, just without the bread, right? You have your spread, you have your turkey, your cheese, you have some raw vegetables. So the charcuterie lunchbox, I feel like it can really be a good backup plan, especially if maybe you didn't have as many leftovers as you had planned. So your lunch for tomorrow is kind of blah. Um, something goes bad. You forgot to make whatever it was. These can be good fallback lunch options that are still really nourishing and really yummy. Um, that doesn't have to be a whole recipe necessarily. Okay. So this is my template for planning ahead. And you're kind of getting ideas for breakfast and then my dinner and snack things as well. So my recommendation to anyone I'm working with is have four weeks of meals planned. Four weeks of meals that you know you like, that taste delicious, that you know how to make. And then you can always throw in fun new recipes here and there. But if you have four weeks of meals, every month you just keep rotating through them so that you're not getting tired because by the time you get back to week one, it's been a month since you had those foods. So let me show you what I mean. For breakfast, most people don't need a different breakfast every single day. Maybe you're different, but I find most people I talk to are okay with it if they have like two different breakfast options and they rotate through them for the weekdays. So maybe you have protein oatmeal and avocado toast, and that's week one, and you're rotating through them. Week two, you have yogurt parfait and egg muffins. Week three, you're having a protein smoothie or a veggie egg bake for breakfast. And week four, it's baked oatmeal or cottage cheese with an English muffin. And then you go back to week one and you're throwing in different fruit, different options. So then for lunch, pick that main protein that you're batch prepping. For lunch in week one, it's a shredded chicken. Week two, I'm making a ton of roasted tempeh and chickpeas. Week three, I have a bunch of ground beef and week four, I have bean burgers and then I'm rotating back. And then I'm throwing that in whatever is left over from my dinner the night before or whatever other types of things I've batch prepped. And what I mean by all these letters here is have some different options. So for dinner, have three to five meals for the week planned. Option A, B, C, D, and E. So there's your five. Then week two, you have the next five. Week three, the next five. Week four, the next five, or maybe just three, however you're going. And then again, you're rotating back through so that it's not on repeat necessarily, but you're also not having to come up with brand new options every single time. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. 
So don't underestimate the power of leftovers. And I say this because I, I so often hear from people, I don't want to eat the same thing the next day, or I don't want to reheat it. Think about redoing it. So for dinner on Monday, you had some asparagus and chicken with the arugula salad on the right. And then for dinner on Tuesday, you had a stir fry over rice. Well, you had a little bit of leftover of everything. You had like three pieces of asparagus leftover and maybe enough chicken for a whole serving. And you had a little bit of the salad and avocado left. Throw it all in a bowl. And maybe you add some extra basil or some other sort of vegetable that you had already in the fridge. And suddenly now I have this sort of Greek pesto Buddha bowl. It's not really a recipe per se. It's nothing that you would you know, post on a blog as something fancy, but all of those components tasted good and you already had leftovers to so throw it in. So think, think of your leftovers as things that you can combine together, especially if you only have a couple of bites of one thing or another, okay? Now I want to end with a couple of slides of my favorite items, because the other thing I don't want you to underestimate is convenience food, because we're all human and we don't always have time every weekend to be scratch cooking a chicken. I mean, in an instant pot, it's fairly easy, but it is extra time. So find the things that are pre-made that are still nourishing for how you need to eat and fall back on those and have those in your pantry and have them in your freezer for ready to go time. So these are some of my favorites and I'm gonna show you from different stores. Trader Joe's is great for ready-made stuff, but you do still have to read the ingredient list. So these are some of mine, the bruschetta sauce and I'll go from the left to the right. Bruschetta sauce is awesome. You can toss that with the box of lentils that's right next to it with some roasted zucchini and it lasts several days. It's also delicious on top of chicken um, as a bowl sauce. So maybe you had a little bit of leftover steak with a little bit of leftover rice, but you don't want it just steak and rice for lunch. You throw some bruschetta sauce over it. Their balela is a mix of different types of beans in an olive oil and vinegar sauce. It's a yummy, yummy protein. So you can mix that into a salad or put it over a rice bowl. Those two bowls there are there two different types of pre-chopped vegetable mixes. There's an Asian blend and there's what they call their, I think, what is it called? Healthy chopped veggie mix. It's just chopped vegetables, but it's already done for you. So it's really great to be able to just toss those vegetables with your protein of choice and a dressing of choice and walk out the door. Um, they have crisp bread crackers. They have good choices of um, meat sticks if you're wanting that as a protein option that's ready to go. Their frozen fire roasted bell peppers and onions are a favorite with everybody who I know that eats them because you don't have to do anything to them. You just heat them up on the stove and they're immediately fajita vegetables. So you can mix those with a can of black beans and some rice and an avocado and you have lunch. Um, they're high protein veggie burgers. It's a good quality veggie burger. So you don't have to make your own patty. Those are the dolmas that I was talking to you about. They're the green stuffed grape leaves, really yummy with a Mediterranean dish. And that can be your starch because it's rice. Those turkey meatballs are always in my freezer. They are so good. All you have to do is heat them up and you can kind of mash them into something. You can put them on pasta, put them in a lettuce wrap. They're so yummy. Um, all of those dressings up top are excellent quality ingredients and they taste really good. And Trader Joe's has them in the refrigerated section by the salad greens. They make a big difference with flavor if you're just making a salad or something. Falafel mix is great for making falafels. Their grass-fed Angus burgers are a good quality burger and they're in the freezer section. Their shawarma chicken thighs, that's something that's a go-to for me if I know I don't have time to actually cook a whole chicken, I'll just get these, bake them up and I have a really delicious chicken ready to go. Um, oven roasted chicken breast by Applegate is grass fed, which is really nice. It's hard to find good quality deli meat. Their red pepper spread is so tasty. It's kind of like a spicy tomato thick sauce. Um, so it's, it's can really umami up something like a cauliflower rice dish. Um, those coconut aminos taste like soy sauce. And oftentimes I will actually have this in my office. So if I'm eating something that I made for myself, I'm like, um, it's lacking a little flavor, add a little bit of coconut aminos and boom, it tastes delicious. Uh, mirepoix is a mix of carrot, onion, and celery. Perfect starter for soups and casseroles, but takes a lot of chopping. So if you can buy it pre-chopped, why not? And then they also have um, frozen tuna burgers for those of you who like fish. 
These are my favorites from Costco. Costco changes all the time. So don't hold me to this slide. They might not have one of these at the Costco that you go to, or maybe they ran out. It's constantly changing. Um, but these are some of my favorites that I typically go to. So Suckies or Sukies, I don't know how you say that. Probably Sukies, probably not Suckies. <laughs> uh, they have a roasted tomato curry, which is chickpeas. So that's a vegetarian blend. It's freezer section. Um, so you can just keep it in your freezer and I heat it up and put it over quinoa done really good if you like kind of like a curry flavor they have frozen salmon they have barley soup which is great they have a pre-cooked uh, chicken you don't have to cook it in the instant pot um little tiny packets of hummus so perfect for packing your lunch same thing with the little tiny packets of, of guacamole little mini bell peppers clearly i like little things from costco but you can dip those mini bell peppers in the mini hummus and you have yourself a little side dish with maybe some rolled up turkey uh, the slaw is great. Those crunchy chickpeas are a fantastic topper to a salad to make your salad, salad feel complete, like a crouton type of thing. Um, veggie patties up at the top, those are good quality veggie burgers. The big bulk quinoa, because you can make a huge amount and freeze it in little sections. Those miniature bags of Skinny Pop are nice as a snack or as your starch option. Not so, they carry that now at Costco and it's a really good quality peanut butter that tastes really good. Maybe put that on some celery. Um, if you are into the salmon burgers, they have canned salmon at Costco that is wild caught and it's way cheaper than buying canned salmon pretty much anywhere else. Costco almost always has some sort of legume pasta, whether it's pea pasta or chickpea pasta, and those can be great for, for like a pasta salad type of thing for lunch. Uh, smoked salmon is cheaper at Costco than anywhere else. Oftentimes they'll have some sort of charcuterie lunchbox ready-made. You're gonna pay the price for them having prepped this for you, but if the convenience factor is there, that might be not a bad idea. Um, microwave bags of wild rice and quinoa, which are lifesavers on busy nights if you don't have to cook your rice from scratch. And then already hard-boiled eggs are also fabulous. You don't have to do the work. And this is my last slide on this is just some other things I like that help me get through lunches um, from various stores. So um, the gluten-free wraps by the La Tortilla factory are Tef wraps. So they're a little bit higher in fiber, but of all the gluten-free tortillas out there, this one to me is one of the best ones because it actually still feels like a tortilla and it doesn't break apart like a lot of those gluten-free tortillas do. Um, so that can be nice. Chobani has low sugar and zero sugar options. And their zero sugar option is not artificially sweetened like most yogurts are. It has um, monk fruit in it and some stevia. So it, it they actually taste really good. That's the milk and cookies one. It's so good. It's like lunch dessert. So maybe you bring that with some fruit and that's a mini lunch. And you, then you have some vegetables and hummus as a second mini lunch. And maybe you're kind of a mini lunch planner for the day, or maybe you just need dessert for your lunch one day. Um, canned beans are always a go-to liquid amino. So that same coconut amino thing I was telling you about, you can buy it in a spray form. So it can, it's actually shelf stable that way. Um, pasture raised eggs and hard boiled eggs. I, I love buying them pre hard boiled because it just couldn't be easier. Um, some of the vegetables at the bottom are the ones that tend to be easier to batch prep. So bell peppers are simple to chop and they last a really long time. Even once you've chopped them, some vegetables don't do as well once you've chopped them. But bell peppers do. So does celery. Key with your celery. Once you've chopped it, put it in a container covered with water and then put it in your fridge and it'll stay nice and crisp. Um, cucumber will, will do well for the day if you've already chopped it and kale is a really hearty green. Um, kind of working our way back up. If you need a protein bar, that Scout brand is amazing. You have to buy that online though. Um, pumpkin seeds are awesome as a quick snack, as a salad topper. Feta cheese makes everything taste better in my opinion. Roasted red bell peppers, buy them in a jar. You don't have to do the work yourself. That's it bars. If you need a fruit and you aren't going to grab a fresh one, that's it bars are just fruit. I always have frozen berries in my freezer and that way I can just pull them out in a container, take them to work and by lunchtime they're defrosted and they mix really well into a yogurt that way. Um, artichoke hearts, ready to go vegetable. There's the Primal Kitchen brand that I told you about and the Abbott Butcher brand that I told you about and nutritional yeast is also- Where's my guys? Okay. And these are some of my favorite resources. Again, I will send out these slides to everyone who participated today. 
um, and I'm giving you the actual link because all of these are websites that have a lot of different stuff. They have recipes, they have packing, the um, meal planning ideas. So these are specifically my favorite pages that I go to specifically for lunch. Um, so just really good ideas. They give visuals. Um, those last two specifically, if you're into bento box ideas, they have beautiful pictures and they're really easy. So those are my favorite resources for that. If you want meal deliveries, don't feel bad if you want meal deliveries. There are a lot of people who utilize these, including myself. There are just some weeks, some months that there's, you just don't have it in you. You don't have the time to do meal prep. So get some meals delivered and bring those to lunch. A lot of meal deliveries, you just pay for an amount per week. It doesn't matter if you eat it for lunch or dinner. So maybe you're home in time to make dinner, but you just can't get lunch taken care of. Get meal deliveries, get five per week delivered and take those as your lunches instead of your dinners. And these are just my favorite brands that um, have good quality ingredients. And then on social media, Real Food Dietitians has a ton on of really healthy stuff um, for lunches. The women's dietitian specifically is geared toward PCOS, but I find she has really, really simple, easy lunch ideas. So I kind of follow her for that. Um, if you have little kids, Solid Starts has a whole lunch guide for toddlers and little ones. But I found, I downloaded the toddler one for my toddler and all of them are great ideas for me too. So even though they're kind of geared toward making them cute for toddlers, I totally eat the same thing. I just make it a little bit bigger in portion. And then that's me, RD Megan. I post food almost every day of just what I'm eating at home and try and make it realistic. So feel free to follow all of those. Those are all on Instagram. And finally, how are we doing on time? Oh, good. We have a few minutes for, for questions. So I just want to point this little flyer here out. We have lots of workshops planned for the rest of the calendar year. Um, sound bath, therapy ball, Reiki, different levels. We have some holiday workshops coming up for our members. And we have a free webinar every month, usually geared toward nutrition um, with either myself or Taylor. But every month we have something free so that you as our community are constantly being educated. So we have some cool ones planned until the rest of the calendar year. Uh, next month, Taylor's going to be talking about liver health. In November, she'll be talking about um, the Thanksgiving relationship with food and, and how to maybe eat in a healthier way in how we eat, not what we eat specifically. And then in December, she'll be talking about herbs that um, specifically nettle that can help with some of those holiday blues. So that's what's going on in the workshop world. Let me pull up the chat here and feel free to put your questions into the chat and I will address those. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yes, the, so the question was, will this be recorded as well as the slides shared? Yes, I will share the slides with everyone who's registered. So I, I tend to only share the slides with registered people, but the recording of this will be posted on our Vimeo page. Um, and actually let me type that into the chat. So it's www.vimeo.com backslash St. Jude Wellness. If you go there, we have tons of free recordings available. So all of our free monthly webinars are up there. Cooking classes that I've done over the past couple of years, um, fitness classes that we did specifically when we closed down for COVID two years ago, we did so much video that it's all housed there for all of you for free. So that's Vimeo, St. Jude Wellness. I usually get the recordings up within a week, so it won't be up there tomorrow, but it will be up there. Um, did you say chopped celery can be stored with water in the fridge? I sure did. So you can actually put celery in water in a container for about a week before it starts to go bad and it stays super crisp. This is something I totally swayed my husband on. He's like, what are you doing? Putting a container of celery in the water, like you're a granola mom. It works and he has swayed. He's like, I love this. I love putting celery in water. So just make sure it's submerged. It can be a mason jar. I'd have like a big Tupperware and just chop them up into however you like to eat them. Submerge it with water. Five to seven days is it'll be just fine. Other questions? Don't see other questions and we just have a couple minutes left. 
So while I wait to see if anyone else has a question, there is our contact number there. That's my direct email. That's also the wellness center email. So if you're interested in other workshops or you'd like to be on our mailing list, so you know when these free workshops are happening, or you just have a question about lunch, or you want to send me a picture of your lunch. I love that when people share what they've learned. Um, and that's our direct website down at the bottom um, where you can kind of just see everything we have at the wellness center. All right, looks like that's it for questions. So thanks to everyone for joining me. I'll stop my share here. And I hope you all come to our next webinar. Um, it, the, the one on liver health is gonna be on the 12th of October if you wanna mark your calendars. And we do typically do that at five. If anyone ever has uh, requests either on a topic that's just burning in your head, please email us because we love getting fresh ideas of what you guys want to learn. So thank you again for joining and we will see you soon. Bye everyone.